<coughs> okay, good evening everyone. Shalom Aleichem, Bruch Ma'aboam. Continue our Shirem and Sefer Bereshis that are again uh, generously sponsored by Dr. Zakim and Meshpachta, Le'iloi Nishmas, Shloima Eliezer ben Rabbi Yaakov Zakim, and Le'iloi Nishmas, Dr. Zakim's mother, Rivka Bas, Tovia Halevi. Ve'gan Eden Temenu Chassam, they should be Melissa Yisharm for their whole families, Ad Biasko El Tzadak. Tonight's Shir is dedicated by Ramosha Weiss as a zechus for the security and protection of Kal Yisrael. Tonight's shir is dedicated by my dear friend Mark Block, who once took me for J Roots, which was maybe my first or second trip to uh, Sachachov, where my great grandfather was the Rav. And we went to Bratislava and we went to Vienna. Two nights ago was the yard site of Rabbi Yosef Engel and many fun uh, places. Um, and he's dedicating as a zechus for Klal Yisrael and Lilinishmas' his father, Tzvi, Ben Siyon, Ben Yisrael, Began Eden, Teim Nuchasai. She be a male of his whole family and be asked to tzedek. Tonight's share is also dedicated anonymously. Okay, we have very exciting news. The upcoming Sefer on Rav Meir, Rav Meir Baal Hanes, and the Eternal Children of Hashem has a cover. So it's uh, imminently coming out. Does Hashem should be ready for Hanukkah if anybody would like to participate. Um, please let us know. And you came to the right place if you want to get the Sefer Ambarashis and Lashon HaKadosh. And I know many people say, I don't speak Lashon HaKadosh. It doesn't matter. You could, you could still get it. And you could get more than one. And you could get it for your mother-in-law. You could get it for your sister-in-law. And even though you got it for them last year, they don't remember where they put it. So they need another one. Okay. Parshas Nayach. Ela told us Nayach. <coughs> These are the progeny of Nayach. Nayach is tzaddik. Nayach is a righteous man. We would expect the Torah to have something nice to say about Nayach. After all, Hashem is destroying the whole world. He's only saving Nayach. So the, we better have something good to say about him. The last passage was, Nayach matzachin bein Hashem. Nayach finds favor in the eyes of God. So he's a tzaddik. Tamim haya b'day roisav. He was wholesome in his generations. Eshol leikim esalach Nayach. Nayach walked with God. On the surface, Everything we have to say about him is positive. Comes Rashi, not so fast. Says Rashi, Yesh me rabbi seinu darshim oisai l'shvach. Some of our rabbis expound this for the praise of Nayach. What does it mean? In other words, what's the Pasuk saying he was wholesome in his generations? What do you, just say he was tamim. Obviously, whatever, whenever you live, it's your generation. He wasn't wholesome in someone else's generation. He wasn't wholesome in Anthem's generation. Right? He was wholesome in his generation. So it, why, why even say the word, B'day Raisav? Tamim Haya. So some rabbis expound it for the praise of Nayach. He was wholesome in his generation, and his generation were a b- bunch of degenerates. Kol shekein she'ilu haya b'dar tzadikim. Certainly, if he was in a generation of the righteous, haya tzadik yoyser, he would have been more righteous. In other words, we're trying to highlight the greatness of Nayach. Compared to his generation, he was righteous. If he would have been in a different generation, he would have been more righteous. Some expound this to the disparagement of Nayach. Yeah, he was righteous relative to his generation, because they were a bunch of degenerates. But if he would have been in a decent generation, if he would have been in the generation of Avraham, he would have been nothing. Is it unusual that we have two such diametrically opposed... You, you often have disputes. Usually they're not so far. Now the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to burst a big bubble because we haven't done that in a very long time. <laughs> so the first thing is the Dvar Torah that people say over on this Rashi, every Noyach, just no, no Sheikhs. It's, it's, now even though you'll find it in Sfarim, but you know one of the questions that they ask on Rashi is why the, those who expounded for the praise of Nayach, they call him Rabbi Seinu, and those who expounded to the disparagement of Nayach, they just say, V'yeisha darshim lagnai. Why are the people who expounded for Nayach, I'm sure you heard that throughout Torah before, right? That those who expounded for the good are Rabbi Seinu. Those who expounded for the bad, they're just those. So it's brought that because if you're going to try to find um, the positive in something, the good quality in something, then that 
allows, that, that earns you the title rabbi. But if you're just trying to uncover, you know, the disparagement, you're just, you know, you're just a nobody. The thing is, not only is it not a good Dvar Torah, it's downright wrong. Because if you look in the Medrash, the two opinions are Rabbi Yochren and Rish Lakish. So, you know, even though you'll hear this Dvar Torah, please ask the person, sit down. Just sit down now, okay? Because it's against Amoram. Amoram offer both opinions. It might be nice, and uh, I don't know if you're going to hear it in shul, I don't know what to tell you, okay? But this is not an authorized... Uh, so that's the beginning of today's share, just uh, a public service announcement. <coughs> yeah, there, there, but not here. Here, so, there are two legitimate uh, viewpoints. So here's the million dollar question that we're going to start with. I understand some ra um, rabbis, they see the words bidoy roisav, that the Torah is trying to praise Noyach, namely that he was righteous compared to generation. If he would have been in a better generation, he would have been even greater. Fine. And some see the disparagement of Nayak. He's only good compared to, you know why he's such a Matsuyan? Because everybody else in the class, you know, is a, he's, he's very, he's, he's uh, excelling in the eighth grade because everyone else in the class happens to be in first grade. But if he would have been in, you know, actually with other eighth graders, he would not be that uh, successful. Fine. These are two opinions. The million dollar question is, how could anyone expound these words for the disparagement of Nayach? Why in the world? Psh, wow. We should, we should have a special uh, welcome. <laughs> but why would anyone expound it for the disparagement of Nayach? Why would the Torah be disparaging Nayach here? I mean, the purpose of this Pasuk is to explain, here it is, Yavon Hashem is trying to destroy the whole world, and there's one guy who remains standing. So, why, I understand there's such an opinion that they're, under, they're learning, the word B'day Yosav is uncovering the disparagement of Nayach. Why would the Torah be disparaging Nayach here? This Pasuk is trying to set up the situation of why God's destroying the whole world and sa saving this one man. Why would the Torah be disparaging Nayach at this point? I understand, you think, you feel that he, had he been in the generation of Abraham, he would have been nothing? Okay, you're entitled to your opinion, but ha that can't be what the Torah is saying here. Why would the Torah be criticizing Nayach? We don't know the man from Adam. All we know is, God's destroying the whole world and he's saving one guy. So. Why would the Torah be criticizing him? <coughs> I mean, everything else is to, right. Everything else is to the praise of Nayach. And the last thing in the world the Torah should be doing here is criticizing here, criticizing him. Why would the Torah criticize Nayach in the opening pasuk? Now, who asked this question? Here's another bubble burster. Okay, you might hear this question appears in the drashas of the Mahari Mints. Who is the Mari Mintz? The Mari Mintz was Rabbi Huda Mintz. <coughs> Rabbi Huda Mintz was the father of Rabbi Avram Mintz, who was the father-in-law of Maram Padua, Rabbi Meir Katzen Ellenbogen, who was, Rabbi Meir Katzen Ellenbogen was the father of somebody by the name of Shik. Shik was Shmuel Yehuda Katzen Ellenbogen. You know that name? Shmuel Yehuda Katzen Ellenbogen. Shik. Shmuel no, no relation to Maram Shik. Maram Shik came, let's say, 300 years later. Reb, um, Reb Shmuel Yehuda Katzen Ellenbogen lived from 1521 to 1597. He was the chief rabbi in Venice. He lived in the times of the Ramah and the Marshal, and also the Mechaber. The Mechaber sent to him the Shulchan Aruch because in Venice, Shmuel Yehuda Katzen Ellenbogen had access to the printing press. So his name was Shik Shmuel Yehuda Katzen Ellenbogen. I believe I, I was in his kever in Padua. He wrote Drashas Maharimins. Who's Maharimins? It was his great grandfather. Why is it called Drashas Maharimins if it was written by Rav Shmuel Yehuda Katzen Ellenbogen? Because the printers made an egregious error. So you might hear the Shabbos, something up. The, uh, the Maharimins says, nah. Just make sure you let them know the Mahari Mintz did not write Drushas Mahari Mintz. Who wrote Drushas Mahari Mintz? Rav Shmuel Yehuda Katzenel Bogan. The printers put the wrong name on the cover. Okay? It's not your fault. 
It's not the person who's going to say over the Baratara's fault, other than they didn't do their due diligence to open up the book. And if you want to take a look at the cover page, Drashos Mahari Mintz, 12 Drashos from Shmuel Yehuda Katzen Ellenbogen. Shik! Shmuel Yehuda Katzen Ellenbogen. And this is his question. His question is, I understand their two opinions. Why would the Torah be disparaging Noyach in the opening Pasuk? Yeah? Fine. Next question. What's... What would be, what would be disparaging? <clears throat> We're saying that he was only righteous in his generation. But if he would have been in the generation of Avraham, he would have been a nobody. So why are we putting the man down? We don't even know him. You know, imagine, you enter the, Shom Aleichem, you know, I would like you to meet Rabbi so-and-so. He's a good rabbi in this neighborhood. But if he would have been, I don't mean, if he would have been somewhere else, he would have been a nobody. That's, that's beautiful. What a, what, a, what, well, what a nice way to introduce the man. Tzadik Bidoy Roisov. Why are we putting him down? What did he do that we're putting him down? Now, <clears throat> Azriel, how are you doing? Good. Okay, good. In Zuchroi Nois on Rosh Hashanah, we mentioned 10 Sukkim of Zuchroi Nois. The man who has center stage, more than anybody else, is Nayak. And we spoke about this slightly Lel Rosh Hashanah. The man who has center stage is Nayak. We say, Nayak, Be'ahava Zacharta. You loved him. Now, you, one thing you need to know is Nayak gets a lot of flack. You know, basically, every time we bring him up, we throw him under the bus. Oh, Nayak, yeah, Bidoy Raisaf. Nayak, Mipnei Me'amabol, Miktane Amanahaya. He was of small emuna. Noyach, what's the first thing he does? He drinks wine. Noyach, yeah, but may noyach. The marble is because of noyach. Moshe Rabbeinu said, mecheni na. Noyach is, he should have davened, and I rectify that. We basically never have a nice word to say about him. Every time we bring the man up, it's, yeah, <coughs> it, we're criticizing him. And even when we compliment him, it's always like, there's always a back, you know, some people, when they compliment you, watch out. You know, what, what do you want? You know, what are you after? What did I do now? It's like every time we have something nice to say about Noach, yeah, but uh, compared to Avram, he walked with God, but Rashi says, yeah, he walked with God, but Avram walked before God. And all of a sudden, Rosh Hashanah, Noach is like the paragon of a tzaddik. Do we say God remembered Moshe? No. Do we say God remembered Avraham? No. Do we say that God remembered Yitzchak, Yaakov, Yehoshua, Yeshaya, Yermia, Yechezkel? No. Noyach biahava zacharta. Who's Noyach? And not only that, of all the zechreinos, we say vatifkedehu. You remembered him bedvar yishovarachemim in matters of salvation and mercy. Bahaviachas mehamabo when you brought the flood l'shaches kalbasar al kain. Therefore, we don't say God haben yaker li afrayim al kain, but because you remembered Noyach. Al kein zechroi noi ba lefanecha. Therefore, his memory came before you. Now, why, in the context of remembering Noach, are we saying that God, you destroyed all of man? Therefore, you remembered him. I mean, this is Rosh Hashanah. We're trying to elicit mercy. Why are we saying that God destroyed the whole world then? And it sounds like you destroyed the whole world. Therefore, his memory came before you to increase his descendants like the dust of the world, and his offspring, So question number one. Never the entire year do we have even a good word to say about the man. All of a sudden, the night of Rosh Hashanah, you know, Zuchus Avais! Yeah, who? Avraham? No. Yitzchak? No. Noyach. When Noyach is all of a sudden your Zayda, the night of Rosh Hashanah, Noyach, I don't know if you'd put him on the Shirk resume. You'd say, you know, the uh, Yaakov, Yitzchak, Avraham, and who is Avraham's father? No. Oh, I can't remember. And before that, Lamala B'Kodesh? I'm not sure. Right? It does, it's not on there. And you ask around, nobody knows, nobody knows. You know, and by that time you're so worn out, you just go on with the shidduch, right? But here, no, the night of Rosh Hashanah, Noyach, and a God loves Noyach, and Vatifkideh Bedvar Yeshua Verachamim. And why the night of Rosh Hashanah? Why in Rosh Hashanah do we say that God increased His descendants like Kechayel Hayam? So let's start with Alam the Shavart, that this was said over by <coughs> Rav Meshulam David Halevi Salavechik. 
in the name of who? His father, the Grizz, in the name of his father, Reb Chaim. Okay? So if anybody asks what you learned, you learned real Torah, brisker Torah. The Grizz said over in the name of Reb Chaim, there's a din in Zechroinois, you don't say Zechroinois on a Yachir. There's no, th- we don't invoke God remembered an individual. So why do we say God remembered Noyach? How could Noyach be one of the Zechroinois? But how, we, don't, we don't invoke a, a memory on an individual. The answer is, we're not saying God remembered Noyach. He remembered Noyach to increase his descendants. So Noyach is not just an individual. Noyach and his children and his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren. In other words, in order for Noyach to meet the bill eligible for Zechroinois, it can't just be Noyach. It has to be Noyach and his descendants and his descendants' descendants. So in order to meet the criteria necessary for Zechroinois, we have to add in the words, Laharbois Zaroi Ka'afrois Tevel Vitzad Sov Kachalayam. Yeah? Okay, fine. But still, why is it the night the uh, on Rosh Hashanah when our lives are on the line? We don't invoke Avraham. Why don't we say God, you know, Avraham, Avraham Avinu. He was thrown into Orkazdim, he passed ten tests. Why don't we say, you know, Yaakov Avinu was learning in Yeshiva Shem Be'ever. Moshe Rabbeinu, Rabban Shem, save us! Moshe gave us the Torah! No, no, Yach. Why no, Yach? He doesn't make it to the, he doesn't make it to the davening. So we're going to um, present a new idea tonight, and then we're going to come to uh, an idea that we've been speaking about a lot lately. <coughs> There's another Pasuk in Yeshaya. <coughs> For a small moment, you forsook us. Rebbe Shalom says, For a, a small moment, I abandoned you. <coughs> but with great mercy, I will gather you in. The Golos is analogous to a brief moment of abandonment. The difficulties in life a brief moment of abandonment. The chesed of Hashem, rachamim gedolim. Beshetsef ketsef. And these words, we can almost, uh, they resonate with what we're going through now. Beshetsef ketsef, in fierce anger. Histarti fanai rega mimech. I hid my face for a moment, for one day, when you least expected it. The shoimer Yisrael, so to speak, you know, he, he hid his face for a moment. Yeah, well, they knew there was, mo- there was movement on the border and there was stuff going on already since 2019 and recently there was more activity but they didn't pay attention to it. So the Rebbe Hashem, so to speak, the Shoimer Yisrael, he hid his face for a moment but uvechesed oilam richamtich with eternal kindness he will have mercy on us. Amar Goyal Hashem says the Rebbe Hashem and if you ask, how do we know? Maybe we won't be deservant. Now says Rav Hashem, Ki mei noyach soisli. This is like the waters of noyach. Asher nishbati, I swore, Mei avar mei noyach oid alars. I'm never going to flood the world again. Kei nishbati, so too I swear, Miket soif alayichu mei ga'arbach, That I won't get angry, I won't scold you. Ki heharim yamushu, the mountains may move, v'hagvois timuteno, the hills may falter, but v'chasdi may yitech lo yamush, my kindness from you will not be removed, uvris shaloimi lo yisamut, and my covenant of peace will not move, amar merachav echashem. So God says, this galos is a fleeting moment. The Simchas Torah, Massacre was a, a brief moment of Hester Panim. The redemption, eternal love, <coughs> eternal kindness, infinite kindness. And if you ask, who says? God says, I swear. So you say, God, what is your, sw- what is your shvua like? God says, my shvua is like what I swore to Nayach. Just like I swore to Nayach that I'm not going to flood the world, I swear to you, I will redeem you and have mercy on you. The question is, 
Why is God invoking Noyach? That's the proof? The proof that God will redeem us is Noyach? Really? Did you ever hear that before? Did you ever hear that this week's parsha is the source of the redemption of the Jewish people? The future redemption? In other words, if somebody were to ask, how do we know God will redeem the, the Jewish people? The answer is Noyach! Noyach? What does Noyach have to do with the redemption? Even though we learned many times, the Zara Kadr says that when he sent the Yoyna, the Yoyna went and he found the crown of David HaMelech. Remember that? Last year. When the Yoyna was sent out, the Yoyna went and he found Ale Zayis. He found the crown of David HaMelech. But somehow, God saving Noyach is the paradigm and the model to prove that the same way he swore he wouldn't flood the world again with a Mabel, he will have mercy on the Jewish people. What does one have to do with the other? So says Rabbi Shmuel Yehuda Katzen Ellenbogen in the Drashos Mahari Mints. By the way, many people are familiar with this. It's quoted just as a Maramakim in the Paradise Yosef. He says something out of this world. What's going to be in the end of days? God's going to look down on the Jewish people. And the angels are going to say, these guys, these guys, this is what you've been waiting for, 2,000 years? For them? Come on. You had, you had better goods earlier and you didn't, you didn't make it happen. So why are you making it happen now? Why would you redeem these people? And that's a good question. That's a very good question. Are we as great as the Nevi'im? No. Are we as great as the Tanoim? No. Are we as great as the Amoraim? Obviously not. An Amorah could look at somebody who's dead and bring them back to life. He could say, hey, get up! And the guy would get up. You have stories in the Gemara. The Amorah went to learn after he got married. He came back a, few, uh, a decade later. His wife's there on the couch. Chana, get up already. Come on. I haven't seen you in 12 years. We just got married. Get up. She got up. The Gemara says that Antonina said to Rabbi, I know the smallest of you could be Mechayim Esim. They could stop the sun. They could look at a woman and she's fertile again. So we're not as great as them. How about are we as great as uh, the Ga'inim? No. Rishonim? No. Achroinim? No. We're not even as great as our grandmothers. Rabbi Rucham would say, you can't even imagine the greatness of your grandmother. And God didn't bring redemption to your grandmother. So why would He bring it to you? Why would He, why would he redeem us? Says Rabbi Shmuel Yehuda Katzen Ullenbogen, in order to pull out of this mess, we got to invoke the following principle in Hashgacha. It's called relative judgment. Okay? Slightly different than we said in Rosh Hashanah, but we're going to come to that. Namely, maybe we're not that great. But compare us to the nations of the world. Compare us to monsters occupying the west coast of Artseno HaKadosha. Barbarians. You know, the world is, the world is blind, right? Well, basically, what we saw this week was a 21st century blood libel. A plain, downright blood libel. Where you have um, terrorists blow up their own hospital, killing 500 people, and we're blamed for it. A Jew, <laughs> a Jew wouldn't kill anybody. A Jew that has an, a, an egg, and he cracks the egg, or she cracks the egg, and she finds a blood spot in the egg. What do you let it do with the egg? You could probably eat it. But chas v'shalom, you have to, th they throw out the egg because heaven forbid to have an ounce of a blood of a chicken. It can't even be a chicken. These eggs are un unfertilized. But, you know, So compared to nations of the world, a Jew would not, <laughs> is a million miles away from any of this kind of behavior. So relative to the nations of the world, we're the Ameich Kulam Tzadikim. So how do you activate that God should say, okay, objectively, you might not be that great, but subjectively, 
vis-a-vis -vis the nations of the world, you're, you're on a very great level. How do you act? When did God ever look at people that way? Noyach! Noyach, according to those, they're doyrashit lagnai, but they're doyrashit lagnai, but it's for our shvach. It's a lifesaver for us. The, the, those chachamim, now don't call them yesh. We already dismissed that, Tvar Torah. Those chachamim, who darshan it lagnai, but it's the biggest lifesaver for, for the Jewish people. Because in the end of days, 2023, we say, remember Noyach. And I would humbly suggest on Rosh Hashanah, when our backs are up against the world, uh, against the wall, <clears throat> and the Satan is saying to God, come on, take him, take him. You know, he's there with the big, uh, take the guy, he's done. Nothing more he needs to be here for. So we say, Banisham, remember how much you loved the Nayach? The son said, Nayach? Where did you come up with that one? Yeah, and we say, Nayach, when you destroyed the whole world, why did you save Nayach? You saved Nayach because Nayach compared to his generation was a good guy. So when you destroyed everyone, that's why his memory came before you to increase his descendants. In other words, when our back is up against the, world, the wall, the most powerful arsenal we have is we, not, might, we might not be so good, but you check out what, what happened in Gaza this week? You see what the nations of the world are like? Do you see any normal family life outside of Umasenu Hakadosha? Fathers, mothers, family units, brothers, sisters, who has real family life other than the holy Jewish nation today? So you say, Rebbe we understand objectively, you know, don't look too close, but subjectively, So the Yesh Meir Abbaseinu, Darshim Lagnai, it's a Gnai for him, it's a Shvach for us. It's a bailout for us. That's why I would humbly suggest, according to Rabbi Shmuel Yehuda Katzen we invoke Noyach on Rosh Hashanah when our back is up against the wall. Because we might not be that great objectively, but subjectively, we've got a lot going for us. But now I want to turn the tables. And I want to speak about an idea that <clears throat> this is the third time I'm speaking about it. We spoke about it in our Shiran Bir Tefillah when we learned about Ahava Rabba. We spoke about it on Rosh Hashanah. And we're going to spoke, speak about it again now because Ein Beis HaMedrash B'li Chidosh and I want to share with you a nugget that occurred to me a little bit ago that's uh, worth the price of admission. <clears throat> In the Sefer Shar HaGalgulam, Reb Chaim Vital records that the Arizal would always tell him your soul, it's so lofty, it's so great, it's so great. He said, Rabbi, come on, what are you talking about? But the smallest of the earlier generations was uh, a great tzaddik and a chassid that I can't even reach his, his ankles. Now, by the way, the reason I'm continuing on now is because everything we said is according to the Manda Amar, Yesh Darshim Lashvach. I'm sorry, Lagnai. What about according to the Manda Amar that this is the praise of Nayach? If Noyach, in, according to generation, he was great, had he been in a better generation, he would have been even greater. So why are we invoking Noyach on Rosh Hashanah? So, Rebbe remember Noyach? He was pretty good. Had he been in a different generation, he would have been even greater. And I think that's also a very powerful Limad Zchus for Klal Yisrael, for us on Rosh Hashanah, and at all times. So the Arizal said to Rabbi Chaim Vital the following principle. You should know a person's greatness is not dependent on their actions. It's dependent on the times they live in. Says the Ari, a small mitzvah in this generation who shakal bekama mitzvahs gedoylois shevadoylois acherem. A small mitzvah in this generation is like thousands of mitzvahs in earlier generations. Not just regular mitzvahs, colossal mitzvahs. So in other words, you could have, let's say, a reshine. 
who this Rishon learned from Matzah Shabbos until Friday night consecutively. And you, Reb Chaim Vital, you can learn 10 minutes, and it's greater than the Rishon who learned for six days straight. So Reb Chaim Vital said, why? He says, Ari, don't you see what's going on in the world? Don't you see the forces of impurity are out of control? Don't you know what, what the Tuma and Svas in the 16th century, right? The forces of impurity were rampant there. You could just imagine on all the billboards and Svas and all the commercials, you know? It was probably, it was probably you couldn't even walk anywhere. We're thinking like, what kind of Tuma was in Svas in the, in the 16th century? We're talking about, you know, the Beis Yosef, the Alshech, the Charedim, Rav Shalom al Kabetz. We're talking about Gedoy Le'olam. But the Ari said, that compared to the Rishonim, a small mitzvah that you do is greater than colossal mitzvahs done in earlier generations because in our generation, says Ari, the forces of impurity are out of control. Says Ari, if I was in an earlier generation, I would be greater than any of the tzaddikim. <clears throat> or he's saying that to Reb Chaim Vital, that if you would be in early generation, you'd be greater than early tzaddikim. So Reb Chaim Vital says, where did you get this from? Says Ari, Rashi. Chaim Vital says, which Rashi? Noyach tamim haya bedoyroisav. Vis-a-vis his degenerate generation, he was pretty good. But if he had he been in the generation of Avram, he would have been tremendous. <clears throat> Rabbi Yerucham Levavitz. Now, if you say, okay, this is Ari. I don't know how to make heads or tails on this. You know, this is Kabbalistic. That Rabbi Chaim Vital, had he been in a different generation, he would have been considered much greater. But just right here, right here, right now, we have a new understanding of why we invoke Noyach on Rosh Hashanah. We say, Rabbi Yerucham I know I have very little Masim Taivim. I know maybe I have many Averois. I know I'm on a very low level. I know I'm But one thing is, don't you agree that if the forces of impurity were out of control in the times of the Arizal, what would you say today? Rebunish Salaam. Where today, the tuma that a person could access literally in three seconds is more then in the last 2,000 years combined, in other words, if you started from the year zero, you know, from the time the base of Mikdash was destroyed, until let's say 1900, you could do more bad stuff in one minute. You could see more bad stuff today than in the entire history of the world. So we bunch of I know I might not be on such a high level, but you got to take into account when I live. And if Reb Chaim Vital was considered greater than earlier generations because the forces of impurity were out of control, so Reb Shalom, you know, I should loom pretty large in the heavens. Says Rabbi Rucham Levavitz, you could have a Talmud in Yeshiva today. He could be sitting and working on a Ritva, a Rashba, a Rambam. And he doesn't really understand what the Rishon says. And from the heavens, they consider that student greater than the Rishon whose words that he's learning. Why? Because the Rishon lived in relative purity, relative sanctity. The challenges that the Rishon had to deal with were minor compared to the colossal tuma and challenge that a Jew has to deal with today in 2023. And therefore, on Rosh Hashanah, we could say that according to the opinion that's doyrishit lignai, you know why we bring up Noyach, we say, God, I might not be so good, but relative to the Chalarias over there, I'm a tzaddik. And according to the opinion that's doyrish l'shvach, I might not be that great, but didn't the Ari tell Rab Chaim Vital that had he been an early generation, he would have been greater than the great tzaddikim? So I would like, to, uh, I would like a piece of that. Give me some of that. And then the publisher of Rabbi Rucham Levavit said, now Rabbi Rucham says we don't like to talk about it. I don't either like to talk about it. I'm just saying it here between us and whoever's listening. It's not like we talk about it 
every hour. But this uh, says Rabbi Yechum, why don't we like to talk about it? Because we don't, uh, we don't want people to become too arrogant. But it could be that even though we can't imagine the greatness of our grandmothers, that doesn't mean in Shamayim we're not held in higher esteem than Rishayim. Yeah, they were greater than us. Yeah, yes, Achroinim are greater than us. Yes, Rosh Yeshiva are greater than us. Yes, our parents are greater than us. But it doesn't mean the heavens don't hold us in higher esteem. Let me give you a mashal. I can't believe it. Today was the yard site of? No? Tenth yard site. Rabbavadya. Tenth yard site. Maran Rabbavadya Yosef. He gives the following mashal. There was a princess. If you need anything, you go to this princess. She could put in a good word with the king. She could bail you out of anything. But you got to give her a good present. Don't walk in with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Don't walk in with a slice of pizza. You better give her fine cuisine. Something, something very expensive. Because she has access to anything. You, you can't come in with you know, uh, a bag of uh, jelly beans. Only Ronald Reagan would go for a, a bag of jelly beans. In fact, I once mailed him, uh, when I was a little boy, I mailed him a jelly bean. There's no evidence that he consumed the jelly bean, but I tried to send it to him. Right? Remember that? Okay. But that's a true story. So, but don't go into the princess with a jelly bean, because you better, you got to uh, win her over. Fine. So over the years, many people brought her um, many valuables, and she, they carried favor with her. But one day, a rumor spread about the princess that she was uh, acted with infidelity, she was put in a prison, she was put in a pit, and uh, nobody was allowed to um, interact with her. And she was wallowing, she was languishing, she was starving, and one guy came in and brought her every day some bread, some water, some fresh clothing, and she got out of the jail. Who does she remember more fondly? Those who gave her delicacies, and finery when she was in the palace, or those who gave her meager meat and potatoes when she was in the pit. When she's in the palace, what does she need already? But when she was in the exile, that's the, those are the gifts that she appreciated. Says Maran Rabavadya Yosef, Zuchuto Yagen Aleinu. Says Rabavadya, the mitzvah that Klal Yisrael did when the Beis Hamikdash stood, boy, did you have to do a mitzvah to find favor in the eyes of Hashem. But as the Golas prolongs, and as we get deeper and darker into the Golas, and Shechina Begalusa, the Shechina is in exile, even the smallest mitzvah finds tremendous favor in the eyes of Hashem. A small mitzvah that you do is more valuable than a great mitzvah of earlier generations. In fact, says Rabbi Vadya, this is the meaning of the Pasuk. Roishcha Olecha Kakarmel. Hashem says to Kal Yisrael, the Roshim and the Aniyim are more beloved like Elio and Hara Karmel. Dalas Roishcha Kargaman. The Dalim and the Avyoinim are more beloved than Daniel. Says Rabbi Yosef that when Jews are in the exile and we're far from the base Hamikdash and the Shechina is in the exile, even the smallest mitzvos, the poorest Jews, in a way could be more valuable than Nevi'im. And therefore, I want to repeat a chiddush because we, we never recorded it. We know that in Rosh Hashanah we blow the shofar twice. We blow it once and we blow it again. The Gemara says to confuse the Satan. What does Taisa say? Taisa says the first time he says, "Is it a shofar? Is it Mashiach?" The second time he says, "It's Vade Mashiach," and he runs away. <coughs> I have a question: Did you ever run? Have you ever been in shul? How old are you now? 35? 36? 42? I, I, I couldn't believe it. No, I thought you were definitely in the 30s. You've been going to shul your whole life for 30 years, yeah? Did you ever, you, you blow the shoifer, so you, so you know it's not Mashiach, but did you ever go to shul and hear the shoifer, oh, it's Mashiach! You know it's not Mashiach. How do you know? Because he didn't come last year, he didn't come the year before, and he didn't come he never came. So you say, I'm a betting man. It's probably not Mashiach. So what, the Satan is so foolish? He's so naive? 
that he thinks it's Mashiach? I thought that every single year the guy falls for the same trick as I could tell my, you know, my kids have a game with the youngest one. Look over there, a distraction. Oh, where? You know? That's what we do to the Satan. Oh, look, a distraction. Look at the distraction. Every year he thinks it's Mashiach? How foolish could he be? The answer is, we're the foolish ones. The Satan knows that even though it didn't come last year, that's because the Kaycha Satoma, maybe we're over here, but now they're out of control. He knows how beloved every mitzvah is to Hashem. The Satan knows any second. He knows that whatever Rashi did, and the Rambam did, and the Chassam Soifer did, and the Marsha did, and your grandmother is nothing compared to what you do. Nobody knows that better than the Satan. So even though it didn't come last year, that's because last year maybe there was some semblance of morality in the world. But now, people don't, don't know me who zeve ezehu, vin yavin. So yes, the Satan knows better than it. Who better than the Satan knows how powerful the Satan is? The Sutta knows that, uh, you know, a thousand years ago he was a minor leaguer. Now he's, you know, now he's on steroids. Now he's major league on steroids. Who better than the Sutta knows how close the Mashiach is? We don't know, because we don't appreciate how strong the Sutta is today. He knows. It's good, it's a good, uh... Yeah, you ever have shot in this Toysvis? Every year he falls for it. Who better than the Satan? He knows, look, I took the United States of America, which was founded on Judeo-Christian ethics. Where are they now? No, non-existent. Where people don't know, you know, there's no such thing as, uh, without getting into too many details, they're just things. They're just, you know, entities now. Entities. So, Tysus is telling us the Satan knows how close, therefore Chavetz Chaim writes, look, look at number 13. Al Kain Matsasi Choyvel Anafshi. I'm therefore obligated. Laharich Lefnei HaKoyl. This is what the Chavetz Chaim writes in his first parak of Tzipisa Yeshua. Sha'adiraba Bizmanenu Yoiser Karoiv Litzapos Yeshua. In our time, it's more likely to anticipate coming a Mashiach. You think he would have come 20 years ago? It's much more likely today. It's much more likely today. 20 years ago, if you wanted to... Now, the Satan provides everybody with something in their pocket that at any time, even while they're learning, they could do it. Now, ready for this? This is also, we, we said this, you can't say it enough. <clears throat> in the bracha before Krishna, no, uh, Nusach Ashkenaz says, Ahava Rabba Ahavtanu. If you stop a thousand people on the street, they would translate it. With a great love, you have loved us. You look at any English siddur, it says, With a great love, you have loved us. It's wrong. It doesn't mean that. It's not what it means. The word Rabba doesn't mean great. It says Rabbi Shimon Schwab, Rabba means Rabba, it's increasing. It's increasing. Hashem loves us with an increasing love. In other words, who did God love more? The generation who received the Torah or Klal Yisrael today? I would never even dare try to answer this question, but if you would have asked me and you would have, you know, pressured me, I would have said, them. Says Rabbi Shab, that's wrong. God's love for the Jewish people is increasing. It becomes more and more and more. So Rabbi Schwab gives, provides one reason. We're going to provide another reason. Rabbi Schwab says, look at the Torah. You know, when I was a kid, when it came time to learn in Gemara, so you learn it in the class, but then you had a test. So how are you supposed to, you know, who could remember from what you learned in class? So you needed to get an English Gemara. So you'd get tradition Gemara or Sincino Gemara, where they would translate the Gemara in archaic English. So in a way you have a better chance of figuring out ancient Aramaic than these English words that have, the last time they were used were hundreds of years before Shakespeare. That's how we learned Baba Kama, Bab Matziah. And then, all of a sudden, 
the Shatenstein edition came out with Makois, one Mesechta. And then they came out with Hamafgid. And now today, every single Perek in Shas in English. And if you don't know a Rashi, you take out a Masifta Gemara. Every Rashi in Shas is explained. And if you don't know a Toysvis, every Toys is explained. Oh, but I don't know Hebrew. Don't worry, art school's coming out with Toysvis now in English. Why is there more Torah today? Now, if there's any blood and chest you don't understand, you just type in and you could hear one of a hundred Magi Deshir explain any line in Kala Torah Kula. Because God loves us more in 2023 than when I was a kid 30 years ago. That's what Rav says. God loves us more. Hashem loves us more. And I would say, based on that, you know why Hashem loves us more? Because we have more Nisyoinos, and we have more challenges. And if there was Tumah when we were kids, today it's, it's out of control, out of control, out of control on steroids a million times. So God loves us more today. And therefore, on Rosh Hashanah, when our back is up against the wall, and the Rebbe Hashem say, come on, compared to your grandmother even, you don't come up to your toenails. Say, so, well, Rabban Sham, Tamim Haya Bedai Raisav. Forget the fact that vis a vis the nations of the world, I'm a tzaddik. Don't you see the challenges that I have that earlier generations never had? Rabban Sham, if Rab Chaim Vital was greater than Tanoim and Amaraim, then what am I today? But you, you know, you can't, you can't focus on this too much. You also have to focus on the fact. But the reality is, you don't even come to the toenails of your grandmother. She had, your grandmother had a million times more. Your grandmother, when she davened to Hashem, spoke to him like he's a, it's a reality. And you're in a fog compared to that. So you always have to have b'shnei You have to, you know, you have to know the right time. Sometimes the Yitzhahara wants to demoralize a person, make a person depressed. That's the time to say, look, Compared to the Hilarias, I'm a good guy. Based on the challenges I have, I'm a big tzaddik. When you feel arrogant, you have to say, I don't even come to the toenails of my grandmother. So they're both, these are all true ideas. They're all true ideas. But at the time of Rosh Hashanah, when our life is on the line, we invoke the procedure of Nayach. But now, this was all to tell you the following chidosh. So, which generation did God love more than any other generation? What's the answer? Ours! Sorry for banging. Ours. That we knew already. You ready for tonight's chidosh? Which generation loves Hashem more than any generation? Also ours. Or at least we have the potential to love Hashem more than any generation. You ready for this, Rabbi Kivager? Rabbi Kivager says, How can Hashem say, love me? You can't command someone to love them. Can I tell you, love spaghetti? Now! Rav Shmuel, love spaghetti! You like spaghetti? No. Broccoli, love Brussels sprouts! Either you like Brussels sprouts, or you don't like Brussels sprouts. You can't command someone to like Brussels sprouts. So how could God say, Love me! Either we do or we don't. It's a matter of taste. You can't command someone to love them. Says Rabbi Kiva Eger, you know why Hashem could command us to love Him? Because when you know that someone loves you, you naturally love them back. And therefore, before we say the command to love Hashem, you know what we say? God loves the Jewish people. Think about that. Say that. Focus on that. And then I don't need to command you. You just need to be aware that naturally you'll love the Rebbeinu Shalom. Of any generation in history, which generation is the beneficiary of the most intense and passionate Haboycher Bi'amo Yisrael Bi'ahava? That's us. We. And therefore, which generation can achieve the highest 
madrega of Avas Hashem in the history of the world. It's got to be us. It's got to be us. So think of the opportunity the Baruch Hashem is giving us. And whatever we saw, Simchas Torah, the Navi tells us, realize it's a rega katain. It's a brief moment. Berega katain azavtich. But the geula and the times of redemption and the chesed relative to that will be rachamim gedoylem. The, the terrible tragedies throughout our history, b'shesev kesev, rega mimech. The redemption, chesed oylem. And if you say, how will we ever be deserving of it? Who are we? What are we? We're nothing compared to earlier generations. We got two things going for us. Yesh darshim legnai. Compared to them, we're very great. Compared to our enemies, we're very great. But v'yesh darsh l'shvach. Not only compared to our enemies, compared to earlier generations that didn't have to encounter what we do in a certain sense that propels us to the greatest possible heights. We are the beneficiaries, therefore, of the greatest love HaKadosh Baruch Hu ever had to Klal Yisrael. And in return, it is our opportunity. It's a historic opportunity to reflect that love. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful night. Rebbein Shem should watch over all of our Achinu Bnei Yisrael in Eretz Yisrael, Ha'im Demal HaMishmar, those who are fighting the war, all of our brothers and sisters whose lives are in peril. Rebbein Shem should destroy all the Soyne Va'ayve Yisrael. And Be'ez Hashem, we should be Zaycha very soon to the Gula Shleim of Yaskal Tzadik. Amen. Amen.